Hi, welcome back. Today, we're going to talk about the central nervous system and the protection that we have for the brain and the spinal cord. So why do we need it? Well, three main reasons. One, it's very soft and delicate. And when we do our sheep brain dissection, you'll see just that, that we need to take special care in handling uh, of the brain. It can damage very quickly, very easily. Two, the central nervous system, the neurons are amiotic, right? So we have that uh, amiotic, the A, and then we have meiotic, meiotic referring to mitosis, and the A saying no, or not, we're not going to go through mitosis. So the central nervous system neurons will not be replaced if injured. Uh, they don't even regenerate their axons, so it's not like our skin cells. Uh, you damage them, replace them, not going to happen. And then also, the central nervous system is essential to life and uh, personality. So it controls, we know we learned last unit, a lot of those autonomic systems and functions, and so it controls that. But then also personality. There's actually a case study of a man who had a pipe that went through his skull and through parts of his brain that actually he survived, but his personality changed as well. So we also have some bones to help protect us, and we got our helmet, which is our skull. And so we have several bones, which should not be new, should be quite familiar to us. So one, we have our frontal lobe, right? We have our parietal bone here. We have the temporal and the occipital. And then we also have the vertebral column. Those bones are all helping to protect the spinal cord there. Now we also have the cerebral spinal fluid, which we'll just call CSF for right now. Now what that does, one, it helps to uh, allow the brain to float. So it kind of reduces the weight. You know, have you ever been in the pool and you know you can just kind of float a little more, you don't have to put as much energy into standing up. The water just kind of helps you do that uh, there. Well, same thing happens here with the brain inside of our skull. It also makes its way uh, in and out of all these grooves here and these fissures. And what that does is it helps to transport nutrients and waste around. You know, it also acts as kind of a protector when you're with your brain, when it's uh, your skull is being you know moved around real quickly, think of like whiplash. Uh, it helps to stop that brain from just smacking into the skull. Uh, it provides that little protection there. Then we have the blood-brain barrier. Now, in other regions of our body, the capillary walls, they're the junctions here aren't as tight here. Right, a little bit more open. Now what that allows is uh, that could actually allow bacteria and viruses to get in quite easy. But around our brain, the blood-brain barrier, those junctions are quite tight. And so those bacteria and viruses cannot get through as well, as easy. Now it does still allow vitamins, ions, oxygen, CO2, glucose, all that good stuff that the uh, brain needs uh, to get in and to get out, CO2 waste. But it does help protect against those, vac those uh, bacteria and viruses. Then we have the meninges. Now, the meninges, there are three layers. Right? There's the dura mater. Dura means tough, mater, mother, so the tough mother. And that's the tough, harder layer here. And we see here, it almost has a, uh, uh iridescent look to it. And then we have the arachnoid, which is filled with the cerebral spinal fluid and blood vessels as well. And then we have the pia matter, pia meaning soft. So this is very thin uh, membrane that kind of moves and doesn't move, but it is found, let me get my brain out of here, not my brain, can't have my brain, I need my brain, but it is found within all of these grooves here, it kind of lays in there, and kind of holds everything together all around the brain. Here we have a picture of all of those different layers that we use for protection. So first we have the skin, then we have the periosteum, that membrane around the bone, and then we have the bone itself for that protection. Then we have the dura mater, the arachnoid, and the pia mater. And you can see here it kind of fits all in all those grooves and fissures there, which we'll give names to them later on right now. Okay, so that's all there is right now on those first beginning structures of the brain and reasons why we need to have those protective structures as well. All right, I'll see you in class.